All right, so I guess um, I will just go ahead and get started here. Um, since this is the coffee hour, this is going to be really informal. Um, my name is Brandon Cox. I am an associate professor in the Department of Pharmacology at Southern Illinois University School of Medicine. And I'm also the director of our graduate program in pharmacology and neuroscience. Um, so today we're going to talk about personal statements and happy to take questions, happy to have you guys join in. Um, I think they're allowed to unmute themselves and talk. Is that correct? I see some heads nodding. Okay, great. So feel free to do that, or if you're uncomfortable or have audio um, microphone issues, you can type in the chat. So just in general, there's lots of different reasons you would write a personal statement. So the first thing that comes to mind when I was asked to do this is the section of the NIH biosketch called the personal statement. Um, but there's also job applications where you need a personal statement or applying for travel awards um, or, um, or even other kinds of, of things you're applying for that you need a personal statement. So in general, the idea is they want to know who are you, like why, what is it about you that we can't see in the details of a CV or a resume? And then they want to know what is your what is your passion? What is your career goals? Like where, where do you want to go and how does whatever you're applying for help you get there? So that's kind of like the big picture of what the purpose of a personal statement is. So in the context of NIH, they want to know where have you trained? What areas have you trained in? And why are you the best suited person to do whatever your role is on the grant that you're applying for? What kinds of previous experiments or publications have you done? What kinds of expertise do you have? What kinds of collaborators do you have that makes you qualified to do the grant that you're, you're applying for? And if you're um, a co-investigator or a collaborator in somebody else's grant, then you really need to focus in on what you're doing on that grant, specifying what are you doing there? Um, why are you um, qualified to do that role? And then what's your relationship with the PI? Have you guys been working together for multiple years? Have you published together? <coughs> do you work in the, same, <clears throat> in the same building or the general area? So you guys can have in-person meetings or now virtual meetings are, are more common, that's less of a concern. But, really kind of addressing the specifics that you can't really see in other aspects of the grant application. Um, and then finally, one other piece about the NIH personal statement is this is the one and only place that you can talk about any kind of hardships or, or things that have occurred that decreased your productivity. So if there was illness, if there was a death in the family, if there some kind of family responsibility, elder care or having a child or whatever, this is the one spot where you can put that. Um, as far as other aspects of a uh, personal statement, um, you know, putting my hat on as the graduate program director, I see personal statements a lot. And um, what we really like to see in those is why is the person interested in our program? Why pharmacology and not cell biology or um, physiology or some other discipline? And then why our university? Why are they applying specifically to my school and not you know, another university? And I'm sure students are applying to many, many places, but still you need to tailor your, your personal statement to each place that you apply. And then finally, um, any research experience you have is gonna be really key for um, graduate school. And you guys, I think, are all probably graduate students or postdocs. So this is, you know, maybe less relevant for you. But if you don't have any research experience or you don't have the exact experience that someone's looking for, you can still talk about things that you've done that are translatable, that are relevant. Right. So there's lots of things we do in research, like managing projects, multitasking, um, organizing, keeping track of complex information. These are all things you can do in multiple different types of jobs that have nothing to do with science. Um, and so you can highlight those kinds of things that you may have done in your past um, experiences that would be relevant for a graduate school application or even a postdoc or applying for some other kind of job. And then we get to the personal statements that are really for an application of like an award, a travel award, a uh, um, uh, you know, some kind of funding to support your project, 
Um, and in those cases, you want to read the instructions very carefully and make sure you address all the points that they request. Um, so I just looked at the ARO um, travel award instructions and they want you to know, they want, they want you to answer, why are you attending the meeting? What do you hope to achieve at the meeting? And if there are any financial hardships that would prevent you from coming to the meeting. Um, and then I looked at another conference, um, the Midwest Auditory Research uh, Conference happening here next week in Michigan. And they specifically want to know how, how are you eligible for the award? And so this award is for underrepresented groups. Um, and so what makes you underrepresented in science? Is it something about your, um, your gender identity, your race, your disadvantaged background, et cetera? And then they want to hear about your professional goals and how attending the meeting will benefit you. Um, so those things kind of kind of generic things and it's kind of easy to throw something that's kind of cut and paste from something you wrote before. You want to meet new people, you want to talk about your science, but I really think you want to come up with something that's unique, something that's specific about you. Um, if you can kind of tell a story a little bit, I think that can help. So how did you get interested in science? Like, why are you passionate about what you do? How is interacting um, with other scientists gonna move you forward? What, what do you specifically need? What, what kind of information are you looking for in those interactions? Not just, it'll be great to talk to more senior people and get other perspectives. You know, that's just kind of generic, right? Um, so you wanna think about those kinds of things. And then I would say the absolute most important thing is you don't wanna have any typos or grammatical errors in your personal statement, right? Cause that just shows you're being sloppy and you haven't taken the time to you know, proofread or get somebody else to read for you. So I know this is an hour session and I've, I've gone on here for just about 10 minutes on kind of you know, what I think of personal statements. Um, and I'm happy to elaborate on anything, but I also wanted to hear from you guys. I was hoping we would spend most of our time today as more of a dialogue and a discussion. So someone wanna break the ice and ask a question or, or have a comment about your experiences? Hi, this is Iman. I, uh... I had the chance to write a personal statement to apply for the LGG fellowship last year. I was not accepted though, but uh, I, it's interesting when you said that we can put personal details. Can we? Can you please tell us more about that? Um, are you referring to the NIH um, personal statement section? Or, it's, or? No, no, it's a personal statement for a fellowship application. A fellowship application, okay. So it depends on um, what the instructions are, right? So you need to answer the questions or follow the instructions for whatever the fellowship application was. But a personal statement in general, regardless of where who you're writing it for, the whole point is trying to get to know who you are. Who are you as the applicant, right? And so it should be personal. It should be unique. It should be about you, where you came from, how you developed your thinking, what you're passionate about, um, you know, if, if you really got motivated to study whatever it is you're studying because of some kind of experience you had, a family member with that disease, talk about it. I mean, you don't have to go into nitty gritty specific details, but those kinds of things I think really um, make the personal statement stand out versus others that are just kind of a bit more generic. I think, I think the more unique and the more kind of personal you can be, um, the better. Thank you. Sure. So I guess I'll have, um, I'll ask another question if that's okay. Sure. Um, so, <clears throat> so I know that there's a research statement and then there's a personal statement and you've just indicated that, you know, in, in a personal statement, like you wanna be able to indicate a little bit of your research experience. Um, I wonder uh, how much, um, I guess there should be a balance between, you know, like kind of, showing, you know, what your interest is, is in terms of, say, for example, writing a personal statement for um, like a, an NIH biosketch, but like how much um, deep, like how much of your um, research experience 
would you really prefer to write in a personal statement? And I guess how much detail do you think um, that should kind of fill up the personal statement? Right, so I, I think you kind of brought up multiple topics there. So first, let me clarify, um, if it's a job application and there's a research <coughs> statement or a, a research plan, and then a personal statement as two separate requirements, those are two very separate things. A research statement or a research plan, if you're applying for a faculty position, is basically like an elaborated specific aims page where you're walking through what you would do in the next three to five years if you were to get a research lab. And of course, you've got a bit, a bit of background, a little bit of preliminary data in there, but probably not very many figures. You want to keep it more big picture because your search committee is very likely multidisciplinary and not specific to your <coughs> genre or your field. Sorry, guys, I have COVID, so that's why I'm coughing and drinking. So <laughs> excuse me. So in the personal statement in this context is really more the why, the behind the scenes, not the specific research that you're going to do, but why are you interested in that research? How did you get there? What kind of skills and expertise do you have? So like in a specific aims page or research plan, you're not gonna talk about your training. You're gonna talk about the science. You're gonna talk about the preliminary data, right? So the training and your background and whatever collaborations you've had, that's the kind of stuff you can bring up in a personal statement. You're kind of highlighting pieces of your CV that um, might be overlooked or elaborating on pieces from your CV because you don't write out bullet points of what they mean like you would in a resume. When you're talking about an NIH personal statement, the, the very small section of the bio sketch, you're very limited on space and you have to be very succinct and to the point. And so you want to be, um, you want to talk about your aspects of training that are relevant, but as you get more senior, you talk less about training, you talk more about things you've done in publications and publications um, and, you know, collaborations you have and things like that, expertise. Um, so it's, it's kind of a different writing depending on um, who you're writing it for and, your, and obviously your limit, your space limitations, you know, often personal statements for faculty position or some kind of job is like a one page thing versus an NIH is like a paragraph. Um, remember, NIH is all about the grants. So you only need to bring up stuff that's relevant to the grant that you're applying for and, and why you are the right person to do whatever it is you're supposed to do on that grant. And if you're just going to be a collaborator doing one small piece of the aim, just focus on that. You don't have to talk about everything else. If you're the PI and you have multiple people you're collaborating with, you need to talk about you know, how you know those people and how you can work with those people and that kinds of things. But I think the big thing about the personal statement is, is the why. The, the, um, you can also kind of compare it maybe to a cover letter in some ways. Um, where it's an opportunity for you to say something that you can't really put in your CV. It's a way to elaborate on some on the things that you've done, the experiences that you've had that that make you, you know, the best person to be picked for the fellowship, or the best person to have the job, or the best person to get the travel award. Why you and not, you know, the five five hundred other people who applied, right? So you're trying to you know stand out from the crowd. Thank you. Sure. Other Thank questions, you. comments? Please feel free to unmute. And um, if you are all comfortable with uh, turning on your camera, uh, please do so as well. Do you have any templates that you can share with us? Um, you know, I, I think a personal statement is, <laughs> excuse me, is, is individual. It's really to, about the individual, right? So everyone's is going to be a little bit different. You can do a search for templates of personal statements, and you can get a bunch of different stuff that's out there that, that I think has pretty good structure and has some pretty good guidelines, but none of it's really going to be you. You know, anything that I have is what I've written about myself. Um, and so it's, it's, um, you know, it's it's not really necessarily a template, right? Um, so I think 
I think the, the best thing is to read the instructions very carefully for whatever you're applying for, whatever needs the personal statement. And then, you know, try to make it personal, make it unique, make it um, specific to you. Thank you and hope you feel better. <laughs> Thanks. I actually just feel like I have a um, cold or allergies. <laughs> a question if that's okay sure um, of course keeping in mind the guidelines that are presented um how long do you think if they don't specify at max your statement should be i would say a page if, if there's if there's no page limitations i would say going over a page would would not be a good idea i'm most people who are reviewing these applications are, are very busy and they've got a huge stack to look through. And so, you know, if they get a two, three, four page document, it's just, they're just going to, you know, not make that person very happy <laughs> before they even read a word. Um, but I would say most, most places will give you some guidelines. Um, and you also don't want it too short, right? So if they don't give you, if they say, you know, no more than a page and you write three sentences, that doesn't look good either, <laughs> right? So there's kind of a some way happy, happy medium between, you know, a half a page and a page for that kind of thing. But again, you wanna make sure you cover all the, the points that are asked for. I mean, that's one of the biggest things that I see when I um, review applications is um, they don't really, it's a very generic kind of um, statement. It, anybody could have written it. It's not necessarily, there's nothing in it that I can identify that it's that student or that applicant. Um, there's nothing really clear that they, why they wanna study what they say they wanna study other than I like this topic. You know, there's, there's it's, it's just, they're very vague. Um, and then the last thing is they don't they don't follow the instructions, right? And so in our personal statement, we ask them to talk about some of the labs in our department that they would be interested in perhaps doing their dissertation research in. And you wouldn't believe the number of people that just don't do that part. So, you know, following instructions is very important. I see Braulio's hand up. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. It was not working earlier. All right. So I have a question. I uh, thank you, by the way, Brandon, for coming despite being sick. So uh, <laughs> I hope you feel better soon. I feel bad that we made you come with all this. It's okay. It's uh, okay. Help? <laughs> um, my question is specifically about um, personal statements for job applications in the sense that they provide the least amount of information what you should do. And you also have overlapping statements, right? The research statement, the diversity statement, the cover letter, all of which, in, in, you know, include a little bit of yourself. And so, if you don't have, let's say, let's say you have a diversity statement, but you don't have a diversity statement, a personal statement, you have to include all that. And what do you do in that case? And in other sense, like I feel like I have to stand out, and so I have to talk a little bit about what makes me unique, uh, you know, my background, where I was raised, and things like that. But yeah. You know, I, sometimes I feel conflicted about how much of that. So instead of like also what to include, what should I not be in such a statement that might put you in a disadvantage? Kind of like, oh, we don't want that person here. So yeah, either either perspective. I I I, I see what you're saying, right? So if, if you've got a teaching philosophy statement, a research plan, a diversity statement, um, and and um, who knows some other kind of set of um, statement about whatever you're thinking, what the heck do you put in your personal statement, right? So then I, I think it comes back to your background. How did you get into science? What, what was your training? And if you moved and switched labs or switched fields, you know, how did that happen? Um, how do you feel like um, that made you a better scientist? And then, um, then, I, then I think, you know, what, what are you passionate about? Like, what do you want to do? Like, do you really want to do just research? Do you really want to have the passion of, of mentoring students and teaching? 
I mean, I know some of this is could could go generic, but I, I think I think there's opportunities you can talk about experiences with teaching or mentoring that inspired you that what makes you want to continue. Um, but I do think that you um, need to be a little bit careful that this is not a creative writing um, area, right? So this this, this you, you can you can tell a little bit of a story about your past um, and your history, but you don't want to get too much detail about. Um, about kind of um, things that are not really relevant to your training or where you are now, right? So, um, you know, if it's relevant, you know, an experience with someone or a disease or some kind of um, topic that kind of triggered you to go down a certain path that's related to your science, then I, I say, go for it, you know, bring that up. But if it's, you know, going on about your family and some of those details, it's not really, part of what drove you to your science? I think probably not. Um, and I'm gonna need to pause for a second. My toddler just woke up from his nap. He also has COVID, so we're quarantining together. So I'm gonna go grab him and we'll have a, um, an assistant for the rest of the, the coffee hour. everybody. <laughs> this is Ben. Ben, can you say hi? <laughs> so this is this is real life, right? So um, I had a baby during COVID. He's 18 months now and uh, there's no daycare back up this week. So we uh, make things work. <laughs> so did I, did, Braulio, did I answer your question? Was there more to it that I Miss there? Yes, you did. Thank you so much. No problem. Anybody else have comments or questions? Or if you want to move into, you know, other areas that aren't personal statements that are more just about, you know, science and, and uh, career stuff, I'm happy to transition a little bit. I have one. Um, so I collect the travel awardee bios what would you say should be included in a professional bio that's being asked for so if we get sometimes two pages in a bio we sometimes get three sentences in a bio what would what would you say should be in a bio for a, like a professional organization asking you as an awardee sure sure so think about what what that's being used for right that's different than the personal statement um, the bio in this context is going to be posted as part of the program, part of the meetings program, um, likely also posted on a website. Um, and, and so you want to think about how you want to be presented to the public. Um, and so I would say um, three sentences is probably a little short, but more, you know, more than half a page is probably too long. Um, a bio is, is, again, it's different from a personal statement. A personal statement is who are you and why are you good for this job or this grant or this fellowship? A, a bio is more just a general who are you that's specific to, to that field or that context. So, um, you know, for my bio, for um, ARO or for my university, I'm not going to talk about um, anything earlier than where I got my um, undergraduate degree. I would say, I would start with, you know, bachelor's degree here, PhD here, postdoc here, and then a little bit about um, the type of science that I do and the type of research that I do. Um, I wouldn't go earlier with those kinds of personal stories that got me passionate or interested in science. I feel like that, that's more of a personal statement thing than a bio. A bio more is like, who are you now? Um, and you can make it personal. You can you can add some details to it that is less kind of 
just the facts. Um, but it's not, it's, it's really different than the personal statement. You don't, the personal statement, again, it's focusing on um, like, why are you passionate about what you, what you do? How did you discover this topic or this field and that decide that was the thing for you? Like, why are you, why are you so passionate about studying auditory coding and the cortex versus, you know, some other sensory system or some cardiovascular disease? You know, why that thing? Um, and maybe that p carries over a little bit into your bio, but it doesn't have to. It can be more about just, um, you know, you, ha you do research in these areas and you're interested in these topics and, and those kinds of things. In situations where a postdoc position might want a personal statement, how might that be different because it is for a very particular lab or research position? So I would say in that context, they're trying to see what's missing or what they can't see from the CV, right? So there's a lot of information about you that you only learn over time by working with someone, working with them, or you know, if they tell you, right? So if I'm just looking at a CV, I see a certain set of information, but there's a lot of other information there that's that's not clarified or specified. So for example, I would basically for a postdoc job or actually any job that requests a personal statement, I would go back to the job ad and look, what are they looking for? What's the job description? And then I would highlight those things in your personal statement. Why are you the best person for that job? What kind of skills, what kind of experience, what kind of expertise do you have from X experience that you can cite from your CV that makes you a good candidate for this job? You know, um, that's, that's the kind of thing that I would, I would think um, they would want. That's great. Thank you. Sure. I think personal statements are kind of like the new cover letter. I think a lot of a lot of places are getting rid of cover letters. Um, you know, when I was looking for a faculty position, I, I had people telling me, oh, you need to spend hours and hours on your cover statement, tailoring it for each place. Um, and then when I actually um, became faculty and talked to people in search committees, I had people telling me, I never look at the cover letter. You can write whatever the heck you want. I looked at the research plan. Um, and then other people would say, well, I only look at the cover letter if everything else seemed interesting and to see, you know, if they had something unique to say. So, I mean, everyone uses them a little bit differently. Um, and so I think personal statements, depending on where you're applying, can be the same. Personal statements can be the most important thing if you're applying for a fellowship or, an, or a travel award, because it's really only your CV and the personal statement. But if you're applying for a faculty position, You've got so many other pieces. The personal statement is important, but it's not the same weight and it's kind of used as a different purpose um, just to get to know you as a person versus the main decision maker. Um, and then the personal statement and your bio sketch for getting a grant, I think as a reviewer, I use it as how are these people gonna work together? Or do they know each other? Have they worked together before? Does the person who, um, you know, the grant says, this collaborator is going to do X. Is that what the collaborator thinks he's doing, or does he think he's doing something else? Like, is there miscommunication already before the grant started? That kind of thing. Um, at least from a reviewer perspective, the way I use it. Yeah. Other questions? What are the criteria that selection committees generally use to screen? like when there is like big pile of applications, like thousands for travel awards, like in big conferences like ARO or something? Yeah, that's a really good question, Jarnell. I've never been on the ARO travel committee award, um, travel award committee, so I don't know what ARO does. Um, I was on, I organized the MARC conference a couple of years ago um, and we had a, a bunch to look at and, um, you know, there's not really a way to we to, to like go through them and put them in piles just by skimming. They're all written documents, right? You have to read them. Sorry. Um, let me just get him going with Baby Shark and we'll be fine. <laughs> 
Um, so, you know, I, I think, you know, it has, to, I would say for those kinds of things, you have to, you'd have to read them. You'd have to read each one. And I would say the ones that are generic, sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me a second. Here we go. There you go. Okay. Sorry. Hopefully you guys can't hear that. Um, so uh, I would say the ones, if, if you have a hundred or 500 of official statements you're looking at and you see some that are like just very generic, there's nothing specific to that person, then, uh, then uh, those ones would probably get put to the bottom of my list. And then the ones that are, you can tell someone's actually talking about their personal experience and, you know, why they're interested and kind of giving some uniqueness to it, I would spend more time looking at those. Sorry, that's probably the best answer I can get. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> this is a little bit of chaos, but you know, it's a coffee hour, it's not a presentation, right? <laughs> Dr. Cox, I can speak a little bit to what the travel awards looks for. Sure, that'd be great. Go ahead. So kind of in the same vein, they really, they rate on the NIH scale, um, but really they just want to get to know you, um, what you're passionate about, to Dr. Cox's point, why you're interested in X, Y field, because just as a reminder, your application for travel award consideration is attached to your abstract that you submit. So if you want to be a presenter or a poster. So they're already trying to connect why that poster is relevant to you and you're passionate about it. Um, but really, they just want to get to know you, um, why you want to be there, what you hope to gain from the meeting. Dr. Huck said it earlier, but I want to network with senior researchers. You and everybody else, that's why we're going to the meeting, but, but why ARO, you know? So that's a little bit into what they look for. Um, also, if you've had it in the past, um, if you maybe don't have uh, access through another vein, like your institution or your employer. So kind of stuff like that, just keeping that in mind. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. If you're applying for a travel award for a conference, why that conference? Why, why, why do you want to go to that one and not a different one? Um, and then I, I think a, a good point, if, if your abstract is, or a presentation is part of the eligibility criteria, then you should mention that, right? So again, this is following the instructions um, of, of whatever the you're applying for. So I guess kind of a follow-up question to that. Um, let's say I have a project that I'm under that I, that I'm in collaboration with somebody, and that somebody um, is coming to the ARO conference. Um, and I'm submitting an abstract uh, for a presentation and submitting an abstract for a travel awards. Um, for example, in that case, um, I mean, one of, you know, one of probably one of the bigger reasons that I would, you know, want to go that could potentially set me apart would be to, you know, say like, I want to be able to meet with this person uh, who is my collaborator and would be, you know, like, and this is the project that we're working on. Is that something that we, you know, we would like to specifically also bring up um, in the travel, like in a, in a personal statement for a conference where, you know, we're bringing up specific collaborations um, and, you know, probably one of the reasons that we would like to go is because um, we'd like to follow up with our collaborator. Like, would that be a unique, thing to write in a personal statement that kind of puts me, you know, like uh, as a unique applicant? I don't know how unique it would be because I think in this day and age, almost everyone is collaborating. And one of the big benefits of going to a meeting is to meet with your collaborators in person. But if it's a multi-collaboration, so let's say there's three different universities and you're all going to be there, then that could be a unique situation that you could highlight. Or if there's something about the meeting that you can't really do virtually. I mean, nowadays, I think um, we're so adept to doing these kinds of meetings and being effective. It's, it's less important that we're together in person at conferences. You know, if this was 10 years ago, that would be a totally different thing. Um, but, um, you know, I think, I think if there's something about the meeting that you would have with your collaborator in person that would be different or couldn't be done virtually, you know, that could be, um, that could be 
make it more unique, make you make you stand out. You know, I don't know what that would be. It would kind of maybe depend on your um, on your topic area. But of course, if your presentation is part of that collaboration, then that's an easy segue into into all of those kinds of details. But I think just saying meeting your collaborators in person is going to be generic. It's going to be you know ninety percent of people are going to have that as well. So meeting other scientists, meeting senior scientists, talking about your science, meeting with your collaborators, this is what everybody is saying. So those things are all true, but like build on it. Like, why is that important to you? What do you specifically need to get from other scientists? What are you specifically looking for? How is doing that in person gonna be way better than doing it over Zoom? You know, those kinds of things. Great, thank you. I don't know if there's any other faculty on the call here who have experience with personal statements that want to give their insight. I mean, I'm not an expert on this in particular. I just was asked to, to lead the session today. So everything is obviously my opinion here. Um, sorry, any other questions? Oh, this has been great. Um, don't want to keep you if this is uh, if people feel all right. Um, if they have any other questions, could they send them to the info box and we forward them to you? Would that sure. be all right? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And I guess I would just end by saying, you know, it can never hurt to have multiple people read your personal statements. Um, depending on what they're for, having them people from different fields, like even, you know, someone who is not a scientist could give you some good insight. If you read something too many times, you're not going to catch the, the mistakes or the typos because you're not seeing what's typed, you're seeing what you thought you wrote. So even in that context, definitely have someone else read it. Um, and then just be as personal and, and as unique as you can, right? Why, why you and not someone else? And we talked a lot about uh, things about the generic things that people say, and um, you got to kind of go beyond that. Um, so that's, I'll just kind of end it with, with those two kind of take home points. And I apologize for the craziness here today and um, hope you guys have some good luck with your personal statements in the future. Thank you. Thank Feel you better so much. soon. Bye. Yeah. Hope you feel better soon. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye.